who now assumes ownership of the first early fielded EA 37 Bravo. I am absolutely humbled and honored to be part of the delivery of the EA 37B Compass Call to the Fighting 55th Electronic Combat Group here at Davis Monthan. As the 16th Air Force Commander, uh, the Commander of the Information Warfare NAF, being able to employ this capability gives us a strategic advantage against our competitors. The EA 37B is the right choice right now because as we continue to pivot to great power competition, we have adversaries that are developing long-range kill chain ecosystems. We have adversaries that are developing anti-access area denial capabilities. And the EA 37B Compass Call will give us the advantage to be able to do things in the non-kinetic spectrum, especially in the electromagnetic spectrum, to turn that into our advantage, not theirs. So back in 1998, when I was still in college, we retired the EF-111. And when we did that, we really lost the capability to have cutting edge at the forefront capability that you can leverage with airmen in the air to be able to do airborne electronic attack. We were flying on the EC-130 Compass Call for years and it served its purpose, but this new airframe and its delivery means that we have a combat credible threat. And airmen on this aircraft that can make real-time, adaptive, agile decisions for air power. Let me talk to you about what this plane can do. We can get there faster because we got the speed. We have the agility to make real-time decision-making changes. The adversary is not going to make it easy on us, and we need airmen in the airborne layer to be able to adapt and overcome to what the adversary is bringing to us. We also have endurance. The EC-130 was wonderful, but this plane can fly up to 10 hours unrefueled. So what we're talking about really is our fighter aircraft can keep all the tanker gas because we don't need it. And we will figure out how to hot pit refuel. That means land the aircraft, swap out the crew, get back in the air for airborne electronic attack. Well, the EC-130 has been one of the flagships of davis Monthan since the early 1980s, and the arrival of the EA-37B as well as the stand-up of the 11th Air Task Force shields a new era for davis Monthan Air Force Base as we look to take on the growing threat. And the bottom line for the Airmen of davis Monthan and the Airmen of the Electronic Combat Group is we are ready today to face that threat. The, as the EC-130 ends the end of its combat life, the need for that aircraft and the need for those capabilities is not going anywhere. If anything, the electromagnetic spectrum has become more challenged over time, and we need an asset that can meet that challenge today. We have that with the arrival of the A-37B. We will continue to dominate the electromagnetic spectrum today and long into the future. Hey, uh, thanks everybody for coming out. It's a really good crowd uh, here. and. Um, I uh, I'll tell you what, I, for, for a pilot, you know, there's nothing better than picking up a brand new aircraft from a factory and, and delivering it to the warfighters. And uh, I, I just, I have to tell you, it's, uh, it, it flies like a dream. And for those of you that are going to get to fly it, uh, like Colonel Wood and uh, the rest of the, the team in your squadron, uh, it's, it's going to be amazing. And uh, we're just you know, really on the cusp of delivering, you know, advanced capability, especially in electronic combat. And uh, if, you know, if you know about the EA-37B, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming, a few years, uh, to see the delivery of this aircraft. Uh, but today is an exciting day, the first one for Air Combat Command. Uh, and um, I, just, I just wanna thank um, the entire team for letting me uh, be a part of it, um, especially uh, to General Hensley, the 16th Air Force Commander, um, and uh, to Colonel Howard, the 55th uh, Wing Commander, you know, especially to you guys uh, for letting me be a part of this, and uh, the entire team here at, at davis Monthan. I, I would be remiss, because I see um, several of our sub, uh, civilian friends uh, that are here from downtown um, in uh, civilian clothes, and uh, thank you for being out here today uh, to celebrate uh, with the 55th Wing. Um, but what, what I'll tell you is, um, this community is so supportive of uh, davis Monthan and of our mission here, and I can't, uh, can't let a ceremony like this pass uh, without thanking you, uh, because not every community has the community support like you have here in Tucson, um, but you make it special. You make it special for the airmen and the families that serve here at davis Monthan. 
um, and certainly you make it capable for us uh, to uh, work on our readiness uh, to train and to be prepared uh, for whenever uh, we get called. Um, and so thank you to the, to the community here um, in Tucson. Yeah, thanks, thank you. Well, if, you, if you've been following the, the build of this aircraft, it, it, they started about five years ago, you know, and uh, they're highly modified, as you can see, a Gulfstream 550 uh, jet to make it an EA-37B. And one of the things that I love in the, in the last five years, because originally this was going to be an EC-37B, um, and we appropriately changed the name uh, to the A37B, the A for electronic attack. And um, that's exactly what this aircraft is uh, designed to do. Um, and in modern combat, um, clearly everybody's familiar with kinetic operations, but what, um, what has become very commonplace um, in the last uh, several years is a need to be able to dominate in the electronic spectrum this aircraft will allow us to dominate. And it'll take away um, our adversary's ability to uh, use that electronic uh, spectrum and then enhance our ability uh, to use that spectrum at the same time and really realize a long range kill chain. And it is that long range kill chain that our Air Force is striving for. And um, this is a foundational capability that'll allow us to do that. And so uh, it's obviously gonna be replacing the EC-130 um, in the next few years, um, and it'll step up our capability uh, from the standpoint of uh, speed and range. It has, uh, it has quite a bit of range. It can stay airborne for about 10 hours uh, without being refueled. Um, so it allows, uh, it allows it to go a long distance, uh, which is uh, critical in, in today's uh, global atmosphere. Uh, and so uh, we, and we had a chance to see um, what a great flyer it is this morning. Um, and um, it's just a dream to fly. And we're uh, incredibly grateful for um, especially uh, the men and women in Air Force Material Command who've been uh, putting the jet together and taking it through its uh, test process and making it ready for Air Combat Command uh, to take delivery today of this beautiful uh, new platform. And so uh, Colonel uh, Wood, I'd like to uh, turn, turn the jet officially over to you uh, and the team here at davis Monthan and uh, wish you um, all the best as you stand up this mission um, and thank you for your leadership and the ability to uh, modernize um, Air Combat Command uh, with this fantastic airframe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.